We're going to talk about two reasons we don't hear God's voice today on the Good News Program. Are you tired of hearing nothing but bad news? Tune into the good news of the gospel. Greg Fritz has been changing lives through the good news of the gospel for over 35 years. This good news will inspire, inform, and change you so you can live daily in all the promises of God. Welcome to Good News with Greg Fritz. Hello, welcome to the Good News program. I'm Greg Fritz, and we are in the middle of a teaching on hearing God's voice. It's very practical and very helpful. If you've followed us at any time at all, uh, you know that I've shared a lot of stories, personal examples, and stories from the Bible about hearing God's voice. And we are making these available to you again uh, on MP3s, free downloads, and free video streaming on Vimeo. You can go to our website and get all 15 sessions on hearing God's voice. And I believe that this is a teaching you're going to want to hear over and over again. Very, very helpful, uh, especially when you're in a time in your life at a crossroads where you need to make a decision. We need to hear God's voice. We need to know what God is saying to us and, and the direction that He has for our lives. There's really nothing more important in life than doing God's will, than being where God wants you to be, doing what God wants you to do. There's protection and provision and joy and fulfillment in that place, in the center of God's will like nowhere else on earth. And the way to get there and stay there is to hear His voice. And so I, I was uh, talking in the last session uh, about one of two reasons we don't hear His voice. I'm going to give you those two reasons, and then we're going to go back and talk about number one, and we'll talk about the second one as we go further in this teaching. But the first reason that we don't hear God's voice is that God hasn't spoken yet. And my point in, in the, the study notes is He's not speaking. And that may be a little misleading. God's always speaking. But one of the reasons maybe you haven't received direction on, on a, in an area of your life is because God hasn't spoken in that area. He will speak to you about what He wants to speak, about what ne is necessary. He won't always tell you what you want to know when you want to know it. So there are times when we're seeking God's will about a specific situation and God just hasn't spoken yet. And that's not to frustrate us, but God knows how to roll things out in proper time. And I've waited on God for many, many days, weeks, even months at times to hear, to get his direction in a specific situation or for a specific decision and not heard anything for a long time. Now, I would hear other things, but nothing on that you know, in that area or nothing having to do with that particular situation. That's just how God works. We can't force God to tell us what we want to know when we want to know it, but we can wait on Him and He will speak. So the first reason people don't hear God's voice in a particular area is because He maybe, maybe He hasn't spoken yet. Is that simple enough? If, if, uh, and, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about it as we go on in these teachings. But, but there are just times when you just get to wait on God. You get to spend time in His presence. It's not all business with Him. He's not going to just, you know, come in, download what you need to know, and then you're out the door. He likes to take time. He wants to spend time with us. In fact, here's what the Bible says in Revelation 3.20. Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door. Isn't that powerful? Hears my voice. So he's speaking. He wants to speak. He wants to commune. And you open the door. He said, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. He wants to dine with us. He wants to have times of fellowship where it's not all business. You know, I did a whole teaching on the pleasure of prayer. And you can find that on our website. But prayer is not all business. It's not all, what do I need to do? When do I need to do it? And, you know, what do I need to do about this? And what do I need to do about that? There are times when God wants to just commune with us or dine with us. And it's a process. It's, it's as if Jesus is standing there waiting for us to make time for Him. And when we do, He will come in and He will take time with us. 
He may not tell you exactly what you want to know right now, but He will tell you things. He is speaking. He wants to deposit things in your life. I said this before, and it's absolutely true. If Jesus told us everything we needed to know about our lives at the beginning of our walk with Him, some of us would never go back. He'd never hear from us again until we got to heaven. He wants to have an ongoing relationship with His people, and He deserves that. You know, there's nobody better to spend time with than Jesus. Let me give you these other verses here, and we'll go on to the second reason we don't hear His voice, is that we aren't listening. So the two reasons, number one, He hasn't spoken yet. Number two, we aren't listening. And I'm going to take as much time as we need to on this one because listening is an art, and it's almost a lost art. We just want things downloaded. We want things demonstrable. You know, we want things that are hard to miss, and sometimes God's voice is something you have to listen for. You have to hear it, and then you have to pray over it. You have to take that direction and, and, and sift through all of the other voices and all the other information that you have to discern that it is God's voice, and it takes time sometimes. And we shouldn't be impatient. So here are the scriptures. John 10, 27, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. That is a powerful promise for people that want to hear God's voice. So if you're in the second category, and maybe you haven't heard God's voice because you haven't really been listening, you expected God to chase you down and, you know, make it plain or get your attention or yell louder than everybody else to tell you what to do, and, and that hasn't happened, maybe you haven't been listening. And if you're ready to listen, if you're ready to stop and really listen, these scriptures bring great confidence. This one is something, one that you need to quote and memorize. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. That's the key, is that when Jesus does speak, we know his voice. These scriptures will build confidence into your life. They'll build faith in your life as you prepare to wait on God and as you prepare to get His direction. And listen, you need God's direction for where you go to school, where you work, where you go to church, who you uh, hang out with, who you marry. You need God's direction in these things and, and, and even little things in life. We, we can use the direction that only God can give and He will give you that direction. He is speaking. And he will speak about the things that you need to know if you'll take the time to listen. Romans 8, 14 says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So uh, another precious promise builds faith and confidence in your heart that you can hear God's voice. If you're a child of God and you know that, if you are a child of God, the Spirit bears witness with your spirit that you are a child of God. And you have this promise that as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And I like the way he says that. He doesn't say that everybody who is a child of God automatically gets led by the Spirit of God. That's not what he's saying. He said that if you are a child of God, you have the opportunity. You have that option to be led by the Spirit of God. And I can promise you this, those people who are led by the Spirit of God through life, they are the children of God. So if you're a child of God today, you have a right to be led by the Spirit. You can be led by the Spirit of God. Now, here's a scripture I wanted to get to. This is Jeremiah 29, verses 11 through 13. And I dug this out this morning and couldn't wait to get to you with this information. This is going to bless you and help you. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. And I'm going to read on, then I'm going to go back to that. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me, and I will listen to you, and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. And that's talking about how we listen, how we focus on him. But notice what he said. I know the thoughts that I think towards you. You know, some people are reluctant 
to hear from heaven. They don't really want God to be involved in their life. They don't want to know what he's saying because they don't really trust him. They're afraid that he might tell them to do something that's somehow going to limit them or take them away from their passion or somehow they're not going to experience all that life has to offer if they follow God completely. And that is the opposite of the truth. That's disinformation. I've had people tell me, you know, I would get right with God, but I'm afraid he might send me to Africa. Well, if God sent you to Africa, it would be the happiest place that you could possibly be if that's what God wanted. And I can tell you, God probably does not want to send you to Africa, but he wants you to be willing to do whatever he says. And you have to come to that place in your heart where you say, Father, I trust you. He's trying to tell us here, I know the thoughts that I think toward you. God thinks thoughts toward you. God has direction for you and wisdom for you. He knows the thoughts that he thinks. They are thoughts of peace and not of evil. God's not going to hurt you. God's not going to cheat you. God's not going to limit you. He has thoughts of peace and joy and pro provision and prosperity. God wants to bless you and lead you into abundance. He, his will for you is not something to run away from or be afraid of. It's something to grasp. It's something to pursue. And really you get this, and this is the whole point of uh, the reason God doesn't speak number two. Reason number two is that we aren't listening. There are people that aren't really listening. They don't really know if they want to hear. I mean, sure, if God wants to offer some information, they would take it. If, if he wants to tell me, you know, who's going to win the Super Bowl or if he wants to tell me the winning lottery number or, you know, if God wants to offer some free information, fine. If not, fine. And that's not how you hear from God. The way to hear from God is to listen, is to value his direction, is to be willing to do what he wants you to do even before you know what it is. And you have to trust him to do that. You have to be confident that God is not going to cheat you. I really want to make that point as I got up this morning and prepared for this. I, I felt like I needed to make this point. God wants what's best for you. His will is not going to hurt you. His plan is not going to limit you. He says, I know the thoughts that I think. They're thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. God has good plans for you and he will lead you into them. Now, don't be surprised if, if you want to go this way and God leads you this way. I, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. There are times when you have to let your heart overrule your head and do things that don't seem logical. But in the end, if you trust the Lord, if you believe in His goodness and His love for you, then you're willing to hear what He has to say and obey, even when it doesn't make sense. Here's another scripture that has to do with the will of God, Hebrews 10.10. 10. It says, by the which will, God's will. We shouldn't be afraid of God's will. By his will, we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. His will sanctified you. His will saved you. His will forgave you. His will sent Jesus to pay the price for you. His will has brought you the greatest blessings that, that exist anywhere. They are greater and more precious than, than silver and gold. They can't be valued in terms of money. They're priceless. And His will brought you those things. It's not a time, if you've been born again and saved, if you've given your life to God, it's not a time to start to fear His will. This is not the time to start to draw back and say, I, I want to do my own thing. I don't really know if I want God's will. That's no way to hear from heaven. You've got to listen with an open heart and an open mind. You've got to set your heart toward Him. And you've got to trust that whatever He tells you to do is going to be best. It's going to be right. It's going to be good. He has thoughts toward you to give you a future and a hope. I don't want to live my future without God. I don't want a future that doesn't include God. I don't want a story that God's not in a part of. I want God involved. I want his direction. I want his approval on whatever I do, wherever I go, whatever I choose in life. I want to get God's approval beforehand. And I want to do that by listening. 
By the which will, he says, we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. That's so, that's so comforting to know that his will has given us the best things that we have. So why uh, try to hide from his will now? We ought to embrace the will of God, seek the will of God, covet, covet the will of God, and value the will of God more than anything else. Notice what he says here. He, he's, he's telling us how, how, what his thoughts are toward us. Then in Jeremiah 29, 12, he says, Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me, and I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. It's not just finding God, but you can find his will, his wisdom, his direction. But, but this is the process. Take time to wait upon God. I call it the lost art of listening. We're not very good. We're good at being busy and hearing noise and hearing information. But, but listening is different. Listening is tuning everything else out so God has a clear channel. I said this before, but it's so true. I don't want to be hard to reach. <laughs> if the Lord has something to say to me, I want Him to be able to say it, and I want to hear it. I don't want to be out of tune or tuned out. I won't, don't want to tune God out. I want to tune Him in. And if I have to tune out everything else, then I'll do that. Then we need to be willing to do, especially in times of your, in your life when you need direction. Don't be afraid to just turn things off, to cut down on the noise, the clutter in your life, the white noise, the background noise. Just cut it off and seek Him. He says it, I'll use His words, then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. That, is, that builds such confidence. He's saying if you get serious and you want to know God and you want to know God's will, you can find Him. He is available to you right now. It brings back the picture of Jesus standing at the door and knocking. It's not like we're trying to get God's attention. We've already got His attention. He wants to get our attention. And that is something that takes more and more effort the busier you are and the more, you know, voices you have going on in your life. He's, we have His attention. He wants our attention. We need to learn to listen. Learn to hear God's voice, all right? Uh, Hebrews 12, 25 says it this way. It says, uh, see then that you, that you do not refuse him who speaks. See that you do not refuse him who speaks or ignore him or resist him or don't tune in. And the New Living Translation says, be careful that you do not refuse to listen to the one who is speaking. He's talking there in Hebrews 12 about the two mountains, Mount Sinai, where God spoke. And we went through that in our earlier sessions, but where, where God's voice actually was audible. And the children of Israel said, we don't want to hear that. Uh, Moses, they were telling Moses, you talk to God and then just tell us what he said. His voice was audible, but now we've come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God. We're in the new covenant. We're born again, and God speaks directly to our spirits. And what he's saying here is, do, be careful that you do not refuse to listen to the one who is speaking. Do you realize how many problems you could avoid and how much trouble you could stay out of and how much money you could save, how much pain you could avoid by listening to the voice of God. He will lead you and guide you in the best path for your life. He can see from above. He will instruct you and teach you, Psalm 32, 8, in the way that you should go. He will guide you with His eye. He will make sure that you're safe and that you're secure, no matter what's going on in the world. The more dangerous the world gets, and the more, you know, the closer we get to the end, the more people need to hear, Christians need to hear the voice of God. They need to be tuned in to that, to that heavenly uh, signal so that they know what to do and when to do it and have confidence in the fact that God is speaking and God's speaking to them. One of the greatest things, you know, I went to Rhema years ago and Kenneth Hagin was teaching and, and, uh, and I, I learned a lot from him 
But one of the things he said that has really stuck with me is back in the 70s, you know, they threatened that California was going to, there was going to be an earthquake and California was going to fall into the sea. And that was a thing. Uh, you may not remember that, but uh, it went around for a while. And they had an actual time. I don't know if it was a day, but it's at least a season or a month when this was going to happen. And somebody came to Brother Hagen and said, Oh, Brother Hagen, I see that you're going to be in California on this certain day and during this certain month. And they've predicted that California is going to fall into the ocean and everybody's going to die that, that, that's in California at this time. And, and what, do you, what are you going to do? Are you going to cancel your meeting? And he just smiled and said, No, I'm not going to cancel my meeting. And they said, Well, why not? Aren't you concerned? I mean, you don't have to go to California during that time. Why don't you just avoid it? just in case. And he said, California is not going to fall off into the ocean during that time. And they said, how do you know? He said, because if it was, the Lord would have told me. <laughs> I'm going to California. We're in this together, me and Jesus. And if there was a danger that real and that imminent, God would have told me. I want to have that kind of confidence, don't you? What, what kind of assurance that would bring into our lives that, you know, I am not going to go into a situation and have the rug pulled out from under me and, 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 and die a, a horrible death accidentally. Why? Because if I was, the Lord would have told me. He would have warned me. He would have told me about that. We need to have that kind of confidence in God that He's going to direct our steps and warn us about things that are ahead. But we've got to tune in take time to spend with God. Uh, there's, there's so many verses that, that go along with this, and we're going to have to carry this over into our next session. But let's go to Jeremiah 33, 3. Jeremiah 33, 3 says, Call unto me, and I will answer you, and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Call unto me and I will answer you. Another scripture, a promise that builds confidence that when you get alone and seek God, you know, there's nothing more, um, there's nothing, no step of faith like going into an empty room by yourself, closing the door and staying there and talking to God. That, that is an act of faith in and of itself. But when you go in there and talk to God and expect God to talk to you, that is faith. And these scriptures build confidence in your spirit that when you go into those times, those seasons of prayer and waiting upon God, that He's, he's going to talk to you. You're going to hear His voice. He says, call unto me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you know not. God can tell you things nobody else can tell you. God can show you things that logic and planning and Preparation will never discover. You can never prepare for every twist and turn in the road. You can never prepare for every challenge that, is, that you're going to face in life. But if you trust the Lord and if you listen to Him and call unto Him, He will show you great and mighty things that you knew not. Let's, let's uh, close with this one. Psalm 4, four says, Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. Again, this is a... This is a lost art, but we need to learn how to be still. When God speaks, you're going to hear Him in your spirit. He doesn't speak from out here. You're probably never going to hear an audible voice. You might, but you probably won't hear it, hear it that way. It's going to be in your spirit. And in order to hear God's voice in your spirit, you need to have your ears, your spiritual ears tuned into God and really have your natural ears shut off. What I'm listening for is not out here, it's down in, in here. He leads us by that inward witness, by the Spirit within. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Where does the Spirit dwell? He dwells within you. So it's very helpful to commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. Now you may not be praying to make a decision. You may not need to make a decision right now. But I would just encourage you to take time to get in the presence of God. One of the things that He's shown me of late is this. Get in my presence and just look around in every direction. See if there's anything on the horizon. See if there's anything that the Lord's talking to you about or anything that He's been dealing with you about that you've been so busy that it didn't really register. And allow these things to come to the surface. 
It's all waiting on God. It's listening to His voice. It's listening so that He can lead you and guide you by His Spirit in your spirit. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. These are powerful promises from the Word of God that apply to you. You can hear God's voice. Maybe He hasn't spoken yet about the thing that you really want to know. Or maybe we haven't been listening. But either way, we can get in position and we can get the direction we need from heaven. You don't have to get God's attention. You've already got that. He just needs your attention. And if you'll put your heart on Him and seek Him with your whole heart, you will find the direction that you need. I hope you enjoyed that today. I'm going to share some personal stories with you in the next uh, episode, so be sure and be with us. We've got these these downloads. I want you to take advantage of this. Uh, Go to our website to the free download section. There's 15 sessions on hearing God's voice, and it's something that you'll want to get and listen to it over and over and have it in reserve when you... For, for times when you need to hear from God because there's coming a time in your life when you're going to need to know the will of God and listening to teaching like this and the scriptures contained in this teaching will be a great blessing to you. Well, we've run out of time today but we're going to continue this in our next Good News program so we'll be waiting for you there. God bless you. God is speaking constantly to you. Learn from this series how you can hear him more clearly. Order your copy of this series at gregfritz.org. We're getting to the end of our teaching on hearing God's voice, and I just wanted to make you aware that we do have this teaching in CDs. This is five sessions on CD that I created in my own media room. So it's a little different than what's on the, the TV program. But if you'd like the actual CDs or the download of these, you can go to our website and purchase that. The CDs are $24 and the download is $16. And all of that is on our website. Take a look around our website. I'm sure you'll find some things that will be a blessing to you. And we'll be waiting to hear from you there. Order your copy of this series at gregfritz.org. I love Greg. I love his sense of humor. I love how he brings out the word. I just just love Greg. Awesome man. Awesome man of God. Immediately he became a favorite teacher of mine because he delivers the Word of God with such warmth and balance and great clarity. He's just straight to the point and down to it and just to let go, be happy. I've been in ministry years. I've never heard anybody teach like this and I had breakthrough today that's going to impact other people. I am so grateful for Greg Fritz. Are you tired of hearing bad news? Partner with us to tell the world about the good news of Jesus Christ. The faithful financial support of our partners enables us to produce the good news program. We invite you to donate and partner with us today. Learn more at gregfritz.org. My idea or attitude that, Lord, you know, you can jump in anytime you want. You can you can help me whenever you want. Just just be feel free to give me some advice if you'd like. But you don't really say it, and yet we think that. But 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 then I've had many times where I'd finally stop and say, Lord, what do I do? And immediately He'd show me what to do. And then and then you feel like, well, God, why didn't you tell me before? Why didn't you tell me this? And He. If, if, he, if he was speaking to you, he'd say, because you didn't ask. You didn't ask. Maybe you're used to people butting into your life and, and pushing their opinions and their ideas. God's not going to do that. 